Hello YouTube and welcome to another Genshin video. Today I'm going to be doing a guide over Diona, how to build her, her best artifacts, weapons, and her best teams you can put her in. In my opinion, Diona is definitely one of the best supports in the game. She can debuff enemies, make your characters faster, she can heal, and she can shield. So she can do many things in her kit. And she's also using some of the best teams at Genshin Impact during phases of the Spiral Abyss. So let's get right on to the video, I hope you enjoy. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you already know who Diona is, but just in case you don't, I'm going to go over her talents and what she actually does. Diona is a cryo archer that can shield your teammates and heal your teammates at the same time. The normal attack is a basic 5 consecutive shots with her bow, but honestly no one really cares about that. We only really care about her E and her Q. So now her elemental skill. Her elemental skill fires icy pulse that your cryo damage to your opponents and forms a shield on hit. The shield's damage absorption scales based on Diona's max HP, and its duration scales off the number of icy paws that hit the target. Now if you actually press the elemental skill, it only fires off two icy paws, so the duration of your shield won't last as long. But if you hold it, Diona dashes back quickly before firing off five of them. The shield created by the hold will gain a 75% damage absorption bonus. The shield also has a 250% cryo damage absorption bonus and will cause your active character to become affected by cryo at the point of formation for a short duration. So I do recommend that you mainly hold this skill because I don't really press it at all unless you just want to get some quick elemental particles but I've almost never done it unless it was on accident. And since it scales off your max XP, you definitely want to build HP on your Diana. And just in case you want to see, here's the scaling for her E and her duration is 2.4 seconds per paw that hits the opponent. So if all the paws hit opponents, your total duration of your shield will be 12 seconds. But the cooldown of the holding is 15 seconds, so if you do hit all of them, you only have a 3 second downtime on your E. Now her elemental burst tosses out special cold boot that does AoE cryo damage and creates a drunken mist in AoE. Drunken mist deals continuous cryo damage to opponents within the AoE, and it also continuously regenerates the HP of characters within the AoE. So this is basically your healing skill, Pop it out on the enemies, you can pop a lot of cry on the enemies, and you can also heal teammates. At her first passive, characters shielded by icy paws have the movement speed increased by 10% and the stamina consumption decreased by 10%, which is really good. You move faster and you take up less stamina. Her next passive talent is opponents who enter the AoE of a burst have 10% decreased attack for 15 seconds. So basically, just enemies will do less damage to you. Always welcome with that. And then our last talent is just when you perfectly cook something, there's a 12% chance to get double the product. Now let's go over her constellations real quick because Diana does get really better with her constellations. So constellation 1 regenerates 15 energy for Diana after using her burst. So you're just going to get free 15 energy after using your burst so you can use your ultimate more often. Constellation 2 increases the damage of her elemental skill and increases its damage absorption by 15%. Additionally, when paws hit the targets, it will create shields for nearby characters on the field with 50% of the icy paws shield damage absorption for 5 seconds. So this one's really good. The damage isn't really that needed, but the damage absorption is really good for in-game content. Also, if you're playing in co-op and you play as Diana with this constellation, the other teammates on the field will also get a shield. So it's pretty nice for co-op too. Constellation 3 just increases the level of her burst. Constellation 4 doesn't really matter unless you really do want to want to DPS Diana, but it's within the radiance of a burst. Diana's charge time for aim shots is reduced by 60%. It's kind of useless unless you just really want to meme it out, but do with that you will. Constellation 5 increases the level of elemental skill, and Constellation 6 is really crazy. Characters within her burst radius will gain the following effects based on the HP amount. While in the burst, if a character is equal or below 50% health, it increases incoming healing bonus by 30%. But if the HP is above 50%, they will gain 200 elemental mastery, which is actually a, a crap ton of elemental mastery. So if you get Constellation 6, you can also buff your team by a lot if you're wanting like a Vaporize comp, maybe you're wanting a Melt comp, Superconduct, High Electro Charged. Any of those good elements reactions are going to do a lot more damage after you use her burst. But of course, you do not need a C6 Diana to make Diana viable. She's really good at C0, just her Constellations do make her much better. Now her best weapon. Diana's best weapon is definitely, in my opinion, the Sacrificial Bow. 
mainly because it gives energy recharge for its substat, and its effect, after damaging an opponent with an elemental skill, the skull has a 50% chance to end its own cooldown, can only occur every 26 seconds. So her E, you know if you have that downtime, since you do know that her E has a 3 second downtime if you're holding it, it has a chance to just regenerate right back up, so you can have a 100% uptime on your E, which is really crazy and it's really good. But if you do not have a sacrificial bow, you can always use the Favonius War Bow, which you actually get for free at the very beginning of the game. So everyone has one of these, so it's definitely a good choice for Diana if you don't have the sacrificial bow. Now let's take a look at Diana's best artifacts. Since we do know that Diana scales for HP from her shield and her healing, it's a good thing to stack up on the most HP you can. So you want to have HP percent, HP percent, and HP percent. But if you do want to bank on healing, you could have your circlet be healing bonus, but I do recommend you do HP just so it helps out your shield and your health at the same time. Now the best artifacts for Diana, if you want to bank on healing, you can do the 4 piece maiden which I have on right now, but soon enough I want to switch over to 2 piece maiden and 2 piece tenacity of the Millilith, because a 2 piece tenacity increases her max HP by 20%, which as you know, increases her shield absorption and her healing. Since Diana already heals enough, she doesn't really need the 4-piece Maiden's Beloved set. So if you mix the 2-piece Maiden's Beloved with 2-piece Tenacity and Millilis, I believe it will be way more effective. But if you do want to win Diana as a damage buff for your team and shield at the same time, you could run 4-piece Noblige. The 2-piece doesn't really matter that much, but the 4-piece for Noblesse Oblige is using an Elemental Burst, increases all party members attack by 20% for 12 seconds. I see many people run this set on her to just increase the damage of your whole entire team after you use her burst. So then if you have C6 of Diana and also use No Beast Oblige, you increase the elemental mastery of your teammates by 200% and increase the attack. So this is actually a really good set for her too. So I believe the best sets for Diana are going to be 4 piece maidens beloves if you want to bank on healing. 2-piece Maidens and 2-piece Tenacity if you want to bank on your shields and just increase their max HP by a crap ton or 4-piece Noblige if you want to increase the damage of your whole entire party. So definitely on your artifacts you want to go for HP% percent on all of them and you want to go for the subsets to get as much HP% percent and energy recharge as you can. As you can see on my Maidens flower, I got really lucky and got plus 24.5% HP on it. I was I was going crazy, I was going bonkers. And you could also try to get flat HP as well on your substats. Just try to go for energy recharge and HP and then you'll start maxing her out. Now Diana's best teams are definitely all the cryo users. As you can see, I don't really have that many main DPS cryo users, but if you have a Eula or a Ayaka, you can definitely pair it up with Diana, because then you can get the cryo elemental resonance, which affects you by electro for 40% less time, and it also increases the crit rate against opponents that are frozen or affected by cryo by 15%. So it can definitely help you out get a lot of crit rate on your characters so you can spec more into your crit damage. Also since the burst does proc a lot of cryo, you could put it with a pyro team as well. See now this would actually be a good team because Sukos can swirl Diana's cryo and Jangling will also be helping melt it around. And also if you use Diana's burst, it procs a lot of cryo on the enemies. So if you have Diana's burst and Jangling's burst up at the same time, a whole lot of melt will occur. So you also have Diluc as the main DPS to pluck off Boiler Melt with his Pyro. And over here, this would actually be a good team as well. Um, just pretend that this with Zarya is like Ayaka or something. <laughs> but imagine this is Ayaka, you have a... You can instantly freeze with Ayaka's burst and Jeek too. You have Bennett as the support. I have my Bennett spec down to damage increasing my whole entire team, so that's why I have him here. And then your Diana could also pluck off a lot of Cryo as well, and get the Cryo Resonance for your Ayaka. There's also a lot of great 4 star teams as well that Diana can fit into for Spiral Abyss. And there's also tons of the top used teams in Spiral Abyss that use Diana. And that's basically all for the items you need. Now I'm just going to go into a dungeon and do a little showcase for you guys and see how it goes. Alright, it is now time to do the Diana showcase. But before I do the showcase, I'm going to show you the stats on my Diana. So my Diana's max HP is 28,522. She has attack. A 1178, Elemental Mastery of 37, 
and a defense of 655. The defense and elemental mastery don't really matter that much. I have 23% crit rate and 78% crit damage, which again doesn't matter. A healing bonus of 15%, an energy recharge of 175.9%, shield strength of 15%, and an 18% cryo damage bonus. I have my jangling and Diana with me, so I can pluck off a lot of melt. And of course, I have my favorite character of the game, Ning Wong. Now let's get this started. So I'm going to pluck off her hold E, and all of them hit, so I'm going to get a full duration of 12 seconds. And as you can see, I am now running faster, using up less stamina, and since I have the sacrificial bow, my E actually reset automatically. So I can use it again once it automatically cools down. I'm going to hit him with it. E automatically reset. Also, I'm going kind of slow for this just so I can show off her uh, actual elemental skills and burst. Now here's for example, now here's where the melt cops come in. Pluck a lot of cryo, pluck a whole bunch of melt. Now look at all that melt and vaporize going on right now. There we go. And that's basically all. She's just a really good support if you can shield and heal your teammates and damage buff them if you want to spec out for it. She's all in all, just a great support. Well that's all for today's video, I hope you guys enjoyed this little guide of Diana. Hope that helped you make some decisions on what weapons to use, what artifacts to use, and what teams you could put her in. She's a really great support, and since we did get that event a long time ago where everyone got a free Diana, I'm assuming that most of you guys do have it, so I hope you do build it. You guys seem to like the Ning Wong guide a lot, so I decided to make a Diana guide for you guys. I really appreciate all the support on the Ning Wong guide. It did way better than I was actually expecting. So that's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.